Today, I'm going to show you how to add stars to a night sky in Photoshop. Hey guys and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace and you can find me on Flurn.com where we make learning Photoshop and photography fun. And in today's episode, I'm going to show you a quick and simple way you can add stars to any night photograph in Photoshop. Now this is incredibly useful. A lot of the time you're taking a night picture, maybe there's some light pollution or stars haven't come up yet or whatever your exposure settings didn't allow for enough time for the stars to come through. And adding stars to a night photo can make a huge difference in the final product. It's incredibly easy to do. And we're gonna show you how to do it in just a few minutes. All right guys, let's go ahead and jump into Photoshop. So here are the photos for today. Now you can actually download these exact photos from our website. Just follow the link in the description right down below. Now these are stock images. You can choose to use stock images or you can photograph your own images, which is even better. So the first thing we've got is our star photo and our background photo. So let's go ahead and click on our star photo. I'm gonna click on my move tool here and click and drag from one photo to another. Let's hit okay and there we go. I'm gonna hit F to full screen. So we're just focusing on this one image. So the first thing you'll notice is that this star photo is not large enough to cover everything. So what do we do? Well, I wanna just make it a little bit larger. Let's hit Control or Command T for our transform and I'm just gonna stretch this out a little bit larger. There we go. Now, I don't wanna to go too large. If I start doing something like this, the stars are not gonna look realistic. The stars are not that big in the night sky. So let's not stretch it out too far, okay? Just enough so we're like covering the horizon. There we go, and you're good to go. Now, you'll notice we have spaces here on the left and the right of our stars. And that happens all the time when you're trying to copy like textures and patterns from one image over to another one. Obviously, like it's not always the exact right size. So what do you do? Well, you can choose to use stars from another photo, or in this case, what we're gonna do is duplicate this star photo, and I'm gonna transform it and fill in the gaps. It's a really cool trick. All right, let's jump in. I'll show you how to do it. So we've got our layer one here with our stars on it and our background layer. Now, the first thing I wanna do, I'm gonna change this layer blend mode from normal down to screen. And that's really cool because screen blend mode basically makes all of your black invisible and it only makes the light show up. So there we can see you know, areas like over top of the house, the black is invisible and we can actually see what we're gonna get, which is really cool. So let's go ahead and double click here. I'm gonna call this a stars, there we go. And now I need to extend the information a little bit, right? I need some more space here on the left and on the right. So let's go ahead and duplicate this layer. I'm gonna hit Control or Command J to duplicate that layer, okay? And simply just click and drag that right over here, okay? Now let's zoom in and I wanna use my left and right arrows to make sure it aligns perfectly. There we go, we're looking good. Now, I basically wanna do the exact same thing right on the other side. So let's hit Control or Command J and we're gonna just use our Move tool to bring this over to the other side. All right, that looks pretty cool there. Now you'll notice that there are a little bit of like, um, like it's kind of repeating the Milky Way here, which is like, eh, I don't really want that. Uh, so what we can do, we can actually scale this a little bit larger, Control or Command T, and just scale that one a little bit larger if we need to. There we go, and then the Milky Way is just gonna be right out of frame there, and that's gonna work out well. And here on the other side, you have a few different options. We can hit Control or Command T, okay? And we can rotate this around, like if we rotated it over there, over there, all right? We have a few different options. And I think that's gonna work out pretty well there. So let's hit Enter there. Now keep in mind that these are stars, so if you rotate them and flip them and things like that, it doesn't really matter that much. If this was like a person's face, obviously you wouldn't wanna do that. Okay, so now I'm gonna darken this area down in just a little bit too, because obviously we want the main focus to be right here uh, in the center of the image. Okay, so we have three different layers now. Each of these different layers has our stars, and I wanna go ahead and merge these layers together, because I, I don't really need them to be three separate layers right now. I can just make them all one layer, and that's gonna to totally work for me. So let's just hit Shift, and I'm gonna click on all three. So we've got all three selected, now we're gonna hit Control or Command E, okay, as an elephant, and it, that's going to merge all those layers together. So Control or Command E is gonna merge our layers together. Now, 
Next thing to keep in mind is when you merge layers together, uh, you're going to lose your blending mode change. So let's change this back from normal to screen. So we've created a couple of duplicates. Now we've got stars that are filling the sky, but it doesn't look right. It is because we've still got too much light information in here. So what I'm going to do is use a levels adjustment layer to darken down the dark areas, and it's going to make just the light areas show through. So the reason that this works is because we're using a screen blending mode. So if I just change this again back to normal, we can see it just covers up everything. But in a screen blending mode, the dark areas become invisible and the light areas are still visible. Now what's really cool here is I can use a levels adjustment layer. So let's go ahead and make one. I'm going to go to layer, down to new adjustment layer and over to levels. There we go. I can use the levels adjustment layer to make an image either lighter or darker. Now in this case, because it's just on top of everything, it's going to make everything lighter and darker, right? Including my background. But if I want this levels adjustment layer to only affect my stars copy, all I have to do is right click here and go to create a clipping mask. Okay, so now as a clipping mask, you're going to see we have a little down arrow here and it's pointing to the stars copy to layer, which is the merged layer from all my star images. So now this levels adjustment layer is only affecting the stars. So check out when I make this darker and brighter, what this does with my image. It's making the stars darker and brighter, but the really cool thing is because we are still, here we go, we've got this as a screen blending mode. The darker I make my darks, they basically just become invisible. So you can make your darks darker and your lights lighter and you can really do a lot of really fun stuff. Like I could make my darks completely invisible and just the stars really bright. Now that doesn't look really that great. So let's just find a midpoint here. Okay. And we'll just bring our darks a little bit darker. Push that a little bit there. All right. Now we're doing pretty good. So now the stars are basically disappearing into the original night sky. And that's exactly what we want. Okay. So our stars are disappearing into the sky, but we still have a few problems, right? Like they're overlapping our mountains here. So what are we going to do? Well, let's go ahead and group our adjustment layer here, okay, and our star layer. Let's shift click the two of those layers and hit Control or Command G to group those. Okay, now I need to make a selection around the sky so I can use it as a layer mask on this group. So to do that, simply make the group invisible. Let's just create a new layer and I'm going to use my magic wand tool. So you can hit W for the magic wand tool. Okay, and in this case, I'm just going to click right up here in my sky. I'm going to hold down shift and click a couple times just to make sure it includes all my sky information and this tree information. Okay, and that's totally good enough. Basically, what I'm looking for here is a nice line here around the tree and around the mountains, up and around the house and over around these trees. So this line on the bottom, that's really the only thing that's important. All this up here, I can just fill in with a brush tool on my layer mask. Real easy to do. So with this area selected. Basically, I've got my horizon line figured out now. I'm going to turn my layer back visible again and click on my layer mask button. There we go. All right. So whenever you have a selection active and you click on your layer mask button, it goes ahead and loads that selection into your layer mask. Now, this is it looks good for the most part. It's not covering up my mountains, but we, we've hidden all of this area up here. That's not really a big deal. Let's hold alt or option and take a look at my layer mask. Okay, so that's what the layer mask looks like. Now, it's really easy to just fill in the sky with white. I can do this in a number of ways. One way I can do that is with my lasso tool, I'll just make a selection right around here. We'll go over here and say, you know what? All this area, I want to be white. So I'm selecting all that area up there. Okay, I'm on my layer mask here. And I'm going to go to edit and down to fill. And we'll just fill this with white. There we go. Now, Anything that's white on a layer mask is going to be visible. Anything that's black is going to be invisible, right? So what we have here is we have all this is going to be visible and all that's going to be invisible. And when you're trying to put stars into a sky, it makes sense to have it visible where the sky is and not visible where the ground is. Okay, so again, Alt or Option will show you that layer mask, okay? So you can hit Alt or Option at any time to, to view a layer mask. So now what we have, let's just turn this layer off and on. Now what we have is our stars in our new sky, which is incredibly cool. Now with these stars in the sky, and they're just the, in the actual sky now, 
you can still do a few things. Like if I wanted to move this image up or down, you could totally do that. Let's go ahead and move it up a little bit. And I might, I might just hit Control or Command T. We'll stretch this out. We'll make it just a little bit larger. Okay, and you could even rotate it around and things like that, right? It's only going to show up in the sky. There we go. That's pretty cool. Let's rotate it around a little bit more. Yeah, that looks great. And you know what? I just want to say, because some areas like this is like, okay, it's, it's uh, you know, we can see a little bit of a difference there in the horizon. Let's just click on our layer mask, and I'm going to paint black with a real soft edge brush just at the horizon. So we'll, you know, basically say that the stars towards the horizon, they're not going to be as visible. All right, and the stars around here, they're not going to be as visible as well. So you can kind of just dictate where you want these stars to actually show up in your image. All right, and let's move this to the left a little bit. I think that looks cool. All right, which is really pretty funny that you can just like, ah, I want the stars to be right over there. Uh, that's the power of Photoshop. Okay, well, there we have it, guys. We've added stars to our photo in Photoshop. You can see that really wasn't difficult at all. So if you want to do this on your own, just follow these key steps. The first thing you're going to need is a star photograph and your original background photo. Go ahead and use the Move tool to copy the star photo onto your original background photo. Next, change the blending mode of the star layer to screen. This is going to make your dark areas invisible, showing just the light areas or the stars. Now, if you need to fill in more area from your original photo, you can duplicate your star layer and flip it around like we've done here, or you can pull in a completely different photo and get stars from different pictures. If your stars aren't blending in perfectly, use a levels adjustment layer that's clipped to the star level. You can make your darks even darker, making them not show up. So again, you just want the lights to show up, which are the actual stars. And if the stars are covering some of your image, like in this case, they were over top of the mountains and the house and the tree, simply load a layer mask onto that layer. Now, in this case, we use the magic wand tool to select around our horizon, made that a selection and loaded it as a layer mask on the group. And then we just went ahead and filled the top part in with white. So you want the top part of your layer mask to be white and the bottom part to be black, meaning the stars are visible in the sky and not visible on the land. So once you've done all that, you can move your stars into place and you're good to go. Thanks so much for watching today's episode, guys. I hope you enjoyed learning how to add stars into a night sky. It takes just a couple of seconds to do and it can add a big impact to your night photos. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll learn you later. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. I'll see you later. I saw you now and I'll see you again.